Hello, Kuman cool 29 here, another Topic League video. And this week I'll be talking about Bolin and Korra from Legend of Korra. This week's topic was submitted by Tumblr user Grimalkins, and her topic is Can you discuss why Bolin and Korra would have made a great couple, and how you would have ideally liked to see their relationship and their individual characters develop over the course of the entire Legend of Korra series? Bolin and Korra had arguably, I, I wouldn't even say arguably, I think they outright had the most adorable potential relationship in the entire show. I mean, just seeing their date from episode 5 of book 1, and the way that Bolin was just taking Korra on a date just to cheer her up, and the way he looked at her, and it was so sweet. It was, it was innocent, and they had fun, they connected, they worked well together. And they have chemistry. Like, this is something that's so... I just don't understand why Bragg didn't see this. Like, they wrote this. I assume they wrote this. That they had Bolin and Korra have this amazing chemistry, and then they end up just... tossing it in the trash for Makora. Like, and then later on, they're like, here, let's force him with another love... In, let's, let's force him with an abusive love interest in book two, and then force him with a, another st stupid love interest with, in book three, and then make her abusive later. Why? But... Bolin and Korra worked well, so well together. Bora, Bora and then Masami worked so well. And they, they, they should have just gone with those. No drama, just focus on the story and have these relationships develop as, you know, co-currently with the story. But we didn't get that. But what I would have liked to have seen with Bolin and Korra is I would have really liked to have seen them grow, you know, uh, grow individually and then grow as a couple. But, okay, there are two ways that you can really handle this. Um, there's one that you can do of having it just be like one season, like just book one and then a little bit of extra afterwards. Sort of like, you know, epilogue material and OVA stuff. And then you can have it be over the course of, you know, four seasons so that you have like do what the show did and have, you know, books one through four. Now, if I was doing this on one season I would have, I wouldn't have Korra and Bolin get together. I, I would think that they're probably not ready for a full-on serious relationship. Maybe something a little more, a little more casual before they're, you know, before they're mature enough for it. Um, but one thing that I always really wanted to see is, you know, Bolin is always kind of a little um, codependent on Mako. And he never really stands out on his own. And when he does do stuff on his own, he you, you can see that without the leadership of Mako, he ends up making some foolish decisions, such as when he tries to do tricks with Pabu on the streets, and he ends up getting wrapped up in the triad business, and ends up getting himself captured, and then he almost got debended by Amon. But uh, Korra herself is... Independence incarnate, like, go, 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 like, I'm doing what I want, I'm the Avatar, you gotta deal with it, uh, to the point of absurdity. And what really would have worked with her, her, um, character arc, or at least the direction they were going with, particularly with episode four, and the end where Korra, you know, basically opened up to Tenzin about her fears, is you have Bolin and Korra, like, affect each other, where... Korra helps uh, push Bolin to being more independent, more standing up for himself, and taking care of himself. And so not, not just relying on Mako. And then, you know, maybe Bolin can show Korra that, yeah, you know, maybe you do need to rely on people, particularly people who are like family, like Tenzin. And that really could have helped her character arc, because... It, it, they really should have done that. That really was the way it was sort of like going before then they were like, shocking swerve, it's all about the romance now. But it really would have helped to have Korra with Bolin uh, learning that, you know, people who really care about you do take care of you. And you, you need to be able to accept this and understand that sometimes you just can't do stuff alone. If you mix it, I mean, it's funny, there's so many ways you can mix all these arcs together and, you know, kill three birds with one stone. But they didn't do that. But 
<laughs> Bolin and Korra could have been very positive um, influences on each other. Even though they're kind of they kind of are dumb by themselves together, I think they would really balance each other out. You know, they they both but they both share you know common traits. They're both goofy. They both love you know ridiculous. They they don't lack manners totally, but they do have a similar disregard for etiquette. Like when they were burping at that one uh, restaurant, and then they got into a burping contest with each other. Because Bolin burps, and he's just like, oops, I'm sorry, I burped. And then Cora's like, she burps louder, and they start laughing. And then you see Bolin takes her to a great site, and she's just like, oh my gosh, all this cool stuff. And then Bolin's just looking at her. Like, like, in love with her. And, you know, it's a chemistry. It's the chemistry there. It's like, that's not even something that you could straight up quantify. They just get along well with each other. They work well for each other. They're a good match. And that right there is basis for, like, at least having them develop their friendship. But, uh, if I was doing this with just one season, I would have them get close, but not, like actual together just become good friends but with the the okay there, there's more than just friendship going on here kind of a, a vibe going on and then at the end when Korra loses um you know the three of her bending elements leaving her only with um wind I, I like that um I like that her being left with air because of some weird thing with the being debended by Amon and because this would lead her into uh, her own story where she has to go out and relearn the elements. She has to reconnect with them. And she has to, you know, open up, uh, with following Aang, you know, having opened herself up to Aang, he leads her on and tries to help her reconnect with these elements by also connecting her with her past lives. So, like, say, Roku helps her with fire... Then you have Kyoshi helping her with Earth, and then Kuruk helping her with water, and maybe she meets other avatars, learns the stories of all these other avatars. Maybe this is where you can mix in, you know, the story of Juan. But this stuff can all be its own separate thing. Shoot, like, what I would love to do is see, like, some OVA episodes. That would be great. Like, do OVAs, like, epilogue OVAs, where you see Korra, over the course of several years, learn this in, and... Like, learn, you know, relearn those elements and basically get to the point where she was before so that she can continue training to be the Avatar. And then, I, I've always been a big fan of um, Metal Bending Officer Bolin. So, you would have Bolin do that and enter into the, the police. And he ends up becoming a much more self-assured, much more mature person who's... Who's still, you know, he's still bowling. He's still got his goofiness to him. He's still got his ridiculousness to him. And his charm and his wit. And his, a, a bit of an, a, a bit of a fun ego. No, nothing like too self-absorbed, but just lacking the attention. And Korra, who has spent all this time, and you know, they would keep in contact with each other as best as they can by writing letters. But she comes in... Uh, having learned, relearned the element, she's, she's much more mature herself, she is much wiser, and she is a much better person for having learned from so many different people, you know, all to reconnect and learning from her past lives, so that when they come back together again, you know, we would be, you know, in their, you know, early 20s probably, that they, uh, sh they're both better for each other and better for themselves. So that, you know, when they've developed individually, they come together and then they can be even better. So that they're both totally ready for an actual relationship. And that that's simple, and you don't really need to show a whole lot of that, because a lot of this stuff can just skip over several years. And then at the end, you can see they come together as, you know you know, an actual, into an actual relationship. The other way that I would have done this is simply going through all four books. Now, this, of course, has different variations, but to go with one that's probably the, um, my number two choice, I, I have, like, three different main variants of this, and this is one of them. 
I won't talk about the third one because the third one is just um, the same thing I talked about with her going over and meeting this up. Except you actually get to see all of this, and each season is focused on specifically one avatar where she learns from their life story. Like you get the life story of Kyoshi and stuff like that, um, and so she learns from that. But this um, this one is basically like okay, four stories that all connect and lead up to book four. So you have book one, book two, book three, book four, and all of them are building up on each other, and each of them focuses on an individual story. What I would do with their relationship is the same thing like I said before with the end of book one. They're not together. Uh, I would actually go slow burn on their relationship so that they would only get together near, like in book four. So in book two, when Korra is trying to regain herself, uh, she's uh, training, and you know this. It's, I haven't really fully thought everything out because uh, my my initial thoughts were always from the single season. But uh, I would just have her, you know, do this training specifically with the other avatars. And so she, you know, she'd probably still stay in Republic City and probably do just some traveling. And each story that focuses, uh, Bolin is there to help her. And of course, she gets help from everyone else. Mako, Asami, Tenzin, Pema. Everyone, you know, in their supporting cast would help her with this in book two when she gets her, and she, when she reconnects. But Bolin would always be a constant source of support and comfort for her. And she, because he's someone who, and I don't think I mentioned this, he never once treated her differently because she was the Avatar. And this is actually what, I probably should have said this in the beginning. But Bolin, immediately when he saw her, he's just like, I love her. Says, I, lo I, like, I want to date her. And when he found out that she was the Avatar, he didn't treat her differently. Even when uh, she tries to ask Mako out, and he, uh, you know, he obviously turns her down because he's, you know, dating someone. You know, Bolin takes her on a date just to cheer her up. There's no ulterior motives. There's no, I'm um, actually going to turn this into a real date. It's a, uh, let's go, let's have some fun. And they did have fun. He wanted to cheer her up because he cared about her. When he lists the reasons why he, why she's amazing, he doesn't go, oh, it's because she's the Avatar. No, no, no. He actually lists the stuff about her. He cares about her, and that's something that was just so sweet, and it's something Korra needs. She doesn't need someone who will treat her amazing, who treat her like she's flawless because she's the Avatar, but she does need someone who would care about her for her, for who she is, not what she is. So over the course of these seasons, Korra and Bolin will grow closer together, and you know it'll be sort of like a Katang. Where, you know, it, though with less less drama, considering that the stakes aren't as high, well, for most of uh, Legend of Korra, they're not they're not on the run from a constant you know during a war, but the they have their relationship growing, and you see Bolin will start really um, coming into his own, um, where he stops relying on Mako for pretty much everything, and basically. Their relationship becomes much more equal, that they can rely on each other, and he becomes, he, Bolin becomes his own man, and he does end up be, taking interest in the, uh, the metal bending, and because he wants to do more than just pro bend. So then he, this eventually leads to him going into the metal bending police, um, possibly because he's being inspired by Lin, but then you have, uh, Korra, doing all this stuff, trying to deal with all the complex socio-political issues of the world and all the bad guys who show up with all their different ideologies. And Bolin's always the person there who is not complicated. Bolin doesn't dive headfirst into political topics. He doesn't really think about political topics. And he's always going to be like the, he'd be like the source of calmness for Korra. That everyone around her has some sort of connection to politics and what's going on. But then there's Bolin, always by her, always part of the crew, always helping her, and always being there to not be complicated. 
And their that's a good way of putting it. Their relationship would not be complicated. It's simple. It's fun. They're good for each other. They care about each other. And then as the you know, seasons go on, you obviously see it start, they start getting closer and closer. And then at the end of, not the end, but during book four, it's obvious that there's something, there's something a lot more serious going on here than we're just friends. And then that's when ultimately they would enter a relationship. And after those several, you know, seasons of development, both of them are much, much more ready than they were in, um, back in book one. So then by that point, they, they basically do just have a very sweet relationship. Nothing too complicated. Like, you know what Masami, or Mako and Asami had in book one. Very simple, you know, very caring. It's sort of like that from, like, when they were first introduced to it. Like, specifically, like in episode four, uh, where Mako and Asami just had this wonderful relationship. Ultimately, Mako and Korra, what am I saying? But Lin and Korra would very much have a relationship like that. But, you know, them being Bolin and Korra, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be goofy. They're going to be ridiculous. And he's going to be... He's going to be, you know, that, that calmness and the lightheartedness that Korra really needs for dealing with a lot of the serious stuff that goes on when she's got evil villains. And like I said, I talked about Kuvira, but when you have Kuvira come in and ultimately come into power, she needs someone by her side who's not going to complicate things, who's going to make it easier to deal with this stuff. And that would be Bolin. And all this time, he's becoming a more confident person so that he can be better for himself and better for Korra. And while Korra becomes more intelligent, more wise, more mature, so she's not only better for herself, but also better for Bolin. So their relationship, the relationship is healthy, the relationship is sweet, and it's innocent, and it'd be adorable. And that's about it when it comes to it, because I don't want to just uh, ramble on to just gushing about how adorable they are, because... Yeah, I don't want to... I, I want to keep this to the actual, like, story. But, uh... Yeah, that's... Yeah, that that's basically what I would have liked. And when I was seeing them, their relationships, even, like, ha like, like when I was watching uh, The Spirit of Competition, back when book one was airing, when I saw their date, this is basically the way I thought their relationship was going to go. Uh... And I was expecting them to actually have, like, real development because I, I thought it was obvious that they were being built up to be lo love interests and that Bolin was going to be Korra's love interest, but apparently not. But, but yeah, you know, that's, that's what I wanted. That's what I'd want from their relationship. And that's how I would handle it across the series and, you know, a, a couple different variants of that. So yeah, that's it for this week's topic video. If you want to submit a topic to me, you can simply comment below if you're on YouTube, or you can send me an ask on Tumblr and do and you know send me topic colon and then whatever topic you want me to talk about. Just make sure to follow the rules that I'll be posting down below. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. And if you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when I get that done. And thank you for watching.